Welcome to Ace MTG, and tomorrow Outlaws at Thunder Junction is released for all of us, and we get a chance to get our hands on those cards. And so to get us hyped for that, I wanted to talk to a few content creators, ask them, what cards are they really excited for? What kind of builder rounds are they thinking? I think it's a really good idea to talk to lots of different people and really see what cool ideas they have. I know we all have our own, but then we also want to be prepared for anything we might see out there on the ladder. So I think this is going to give us a great opportunity to learn some of these cards and also find out some maybe new cool combos that we might see out there and get you all hyped up. Maybe you want to check out these content creators because you see something that they want to build that really excites you or something you never heard before. So make sure you check the timestamps and you can see each one that we're going to be talking to today. And they're going to be giving me four or five different cards they're really hyped to build around. And make sure you stay at the very end of the video. And that's where I'm going to let you know a couple cards that I left out of my top 10 that after I've had about a week now to digest and start making some decks and really thinking about it that I would definitely have to put back into the top 10. Also, as far as things that are coming up this week, on Wednesday, on Friday, I'm going to be having brand new decks for you from Outlaws at Thunder Junction. And on Saturday, we're bringing back the Weekend Kumite. So I will give more information about that, obviously, in Discord. But anybody who is interested in that, please go ahead, check out the Discord link in the description, and then we're going to set that up. It's a free-to-play tournament on Saturday. Bring your best deck. Bring those Thunder Junction cards, bring your decks of the past, and we battle it out in a Swiss tournament, which means you get to play at least five different matches. And those of you who have the best record, they're going to face off in the championship. And then I'm going to give a code to give you six packs of Thunder Junction. Absolutely free for you to play. Really fun community involvement. I love doing them. So we're bringing it back on this Saturday. Again, more info in Discord. But let's go ahead and jump in and see what these streamers have to say about this new set. All right, we are here with Mythic Mike, and if you don't know who he is, I don't know what rock you've been under. He is famous for making <laughs> absolutely banger budget decks. He is responsible for that three-turn kill deck that you see all over the place, and he's constantly thinking of creative, new, unique decks, so I cannot wait to hear the decks he is interested to be building around and the cards that he thinks you should craft right away. And just know this, everybody, they're not going to be your typical ones you see from everybody. He will always be unique, and I expect Back to see that. So which ones are you going to be flexing for the camera on? Well, thank you, Ace. I appreciate it. Ace is also amazing, so definitely mm -hmm. follow his channel. Uh, I've got a couple right here. I think I picked five. The first one is Rise of the Varmints. Uh, I think it's going to be a super fun build around. It's this one where you create X2-1 green varmint creatures, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. There's already a lot of good synergies in black-green or milling things in your graveyard with souls. And there's actually a new flyer that gets cheaper if you have things in your graveyard. So there's already a deck forming there where you just mill all your creatures in your graveyard. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just pay three because it has a plot cost of three. Um, and then you can play it for free at, at future turns. And if we play this turn three and we just have a bunch of little creatures out, we're self milling. And then the next turn we play this get five two ones right because i mean it's not that hard to get a ton of creatures in your graveyard yeah. uh we're gonna have imidanes on deck because plot is uh free so I was just when you gonna play ask the you that question were you thinking about hasting these bad boys <laughs> and of course you were <laughs> yeah 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 so we're gonna have imidanes coming out because again you play this plot card you you paid the three and now it comes in on turn four for free so then you have all your mana up for Imidanes, and then we're sliding in. So if you have five two ones, that's 15 plus another three. So that'll be 18 with Imidane. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was killing people out of nowhere. And it goes so well with other cards. Like I said, there's other payoffs already for putting creatures in your graveyard. So I think that'll just be one great avenue. And since we have red in there for Imidanes, I'm going to have Callus Sellsword. And we're going to fling some bad are. boys. <laughs> yeah, we're going to fling some bad boys as well. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, very excited for that card. Uh, the other card that I think will be best that I'm hoping to break is Great Train Heist. Uh, yeah. this, is a nut, this is a spree card uh, where you pay one and then you choose the other chapters. One of the chapters is you pay one more, and it is an instant, by the way. You choose target opponent whenever a creature treasure. So you can get a lot of treasures to do crazy things. Um, the other one, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain first strike. So blow people out. After blocks, you can play that, really crush them. But the most important one for me 
is three more. Untap all creatures you control. If it's your combat phase, there's an additional combat phase after. So, I mean, what that means is just getting an extra turn. If you have attack triggers, so in dragon decks, there's the um, battle dragon. Whenever you attack, it deals pings for two damage for every dragon. So you're actually going to get those attack triggers off all your dragons twice, just as an example. Um, I play a lot of Raiju decks where he puts counters on things, then does damage to people. You're going to get that twice because attack triggers will go off twice. And the coolest thing is if you don't, you know, if you can't use the extra turn, you do have these other options. Uh, for example, just ramping with some treasures. Uh, my plan, though, is to pair it with Alchemist Gambit, which is a three mana extra turn spell where you lose the game after your next turn if you don't win. So the way you do it is you play the Alchemist Gambit, you attack in, you play the Alchemist Gambit, you get your next turn, you have all your mana up. You, now you play your Great Drain Heist. This assumes you have both, but it will happen sometimes. And then you're going to get two more combat steps. Um, so it's three combat steps yeah. pretty easily. And you don't need a ton of mana because off Alchemist Gambit, you get the extra turn. And so you get the untap. Untapped. Yeah, so I think it's going to be super fun. You can pair it with Maniform Hellkite. Maniform Hellkite does not really work with Great Train Heist because you need to already be attacking when you play it. So then what, the, you'll make a... Maniform Hellkite makes creatures, but you'll make the creature and he won't be attacking. So there's a little counter synergy, but we're going to break some stuff. It's going to be fun. Uh, so, so that's, that's my what card I did. love about that is, right, everybody... I've heard people hyped on that card as well, but like you like to refer to them, the trash people constantly want it in their Boris Convoke deck, right? Oh, we swing in with this back of the field and we go again. And you are going a completely different path, and that's what you always do. That's what I love, so... Yeah, we're also throwing that two-mana board wipe of two damage instant speed for non-outlaws. We're throwing that in the same deck, so <laughs> trash people are gonna get out of here. We're taking them out. <laughs> There's a, I actually have a video coming out soon, which is the top 15 cards to beat uh, the Boros Convoke Trash people. So uh, <laughs> you'll see my thoughts there. <laughs> All right, so what else have we got on deck? All right, we got Legion Extruder. Legion Extruder is a two-mana artifact. It's from the big score one. It's not legendary. When it enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target, um, which is fine for an artifact that does damage. You can blink it and, and things like that. But the, the best part is two and you tap it, you sacrifice another artifact, create a three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. That's also um, an artifact right there. So with like artifact ETBs, things like that, there's a lot of cool synergies you can do. Even just sacrificing treasures or map tokens and things can make you some three threes. This gets around board wipes, not temporary lockdown, yeah. but there are some ways to deal with temporary lockdown in the new set. And when you kill Temporary Lockdown, this will ping them again for two. Uh, so there's a lot of fun things. But, I mean, if they're just trying to beat you with Sunfalls, you're going to keep That's making yeah. three threes off your maps. And uh, it'll just be a really fun win con and artifact deck. So I'm super pumped for it. What I really like about that, too, is a lot of those artifact decks, right? You can build this great board. But a lot of times you don't have removal early on for some of the things that might get you before you set up. So I like what you're thinking there. All right. I got two more. We got Lively Dirt. Two mana, black spell, uncommon. You know, we're going to get some budget bangers here. Um, and it's a spree card as well. The, all the spree cards are so good, honestly. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, modality, right? Yeah, it's the like the opposite. you get. It's <laughs> yeah. When, when the opponent gets to choose, the card is always way worse. And when you get to yep. choose, the card is infinitely better. Um, but for one more, you know, it's two to cast at sorcery speed. For one more, search your library for a card. Put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. For two more, return up to two creature cards with total mana, total mana four or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty sick. Um, I'm going to do this in Insidious Roots. I'm, okay, I'm yeah. super pumped about Insidious Roots. Because we're going to find Ashnod's Harvester and put it in our graveyard for three. Ashnod's is a cool thing you can unearth. And then it double triggers Insidious Roots because one from the unearth. And then it also exiles another card. So you can do things like that. But, if you, but additionally, you know, you can just pay five and put something in your graveyard, and then also return two creatures, so you'll trigger Insidious Roots at least once. The thing that you put in your graveyard can be in Insidious Roots, um, because it's any card goes in your graveyard. You can't return it with this card, but there's other cards where you can return non-land permanents from your graveyard Yeah. to get Insidious Roots. So you can kind of tutor Insidious Roots in a roundabout way, but uh, who knows if that's going to be pull-offable. But uh, I still think the other modes are going to be very sick in an Insidious Roots deck. I'm not ready to give up on Insidious Roots yet. 
Yeah, I still think that deck could pop off. It's just one of those things. If it gives you another way to find your Insidious Roots, if you get out of the graveyard, the great, because if that deck doesn't find the Insidious Roots, that's when it hits that trouble spot. If, you exactly. Get I made a recent one with tokens and skeletons as another win con. Yeah. But um, also, I am going to use that desert guy, the four mana, like five, four, eight uh, trample, or maybe six, five. Oh, the yeah, six, six, five, five trample, trample flash if one. you have a desert. Yeah, and for two mana, you exile from your graveyard yep. and put a desert into yeah. play. So having some top-end cards like that in your Insidious Roots deck, I think it's going to go a long way. You can also return that with the card I just mentioned. I mean, yep. you'd only return one card, but pretty cool, and your deserts can ping people. So look, we're going to have some fun things, and I'm, I'm making an, an Insidious Roots deck already. And um, going into your last card, and a, a quick note. So Mythic Mike and I, we've talked over the past few weeks when they were spoiling some of these cards. And if you've watched his channel, you know he's been making skeletons a thing for the past seven weeks, at least, right? And he was hyped on some of these new skeletons, but now he does not like to be like everybody else. And now everybody wants to do skeletons, including myself. And so he's like, <laughs> all right, those are no longer my hyped cards. So what is your most hyped now you would like to build around? And don't worry, I'm gonna make a skeletons <laughs> deck, but I can't do it while everyone else is. I actually, my first skeletons deck was the it was the, I think it was the first deck I made when Corpses of the Lost came out, whatever set that was. So, um, yeah, it's been a minute. Um, but don't worry. I, I've got a good one planned. We're going to give it a little time to breathe and then <laughs> bring out our skeleton banger. And then show them how it's um, really done. <laughs> exactly. Same with the turn three kill deck. I love turn three kill decks, but now everyone's making them because of the one, two flyer. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a little time to breathe and then we're going to make our version. Um, but uh, Rustler Rampage is my last one. It is a one mana spree. Spree, my god, what a crazy <laughs> card deck. Also uncommon, so a budget banger. Um, so for one more, it's an instant untap all creatures, target players, controls. And for another one, or instead of saying the first one, target creature gains double strike. So I really do play a lot of these double strike spells um, already. Your options before, there was like a two mana red one where your options were double strike or counter an instant or, or uh, double an instant or sorcery you cast this turn. And there was another one attached to like a five mana, five, four menace body. But this is by far, I think, the best instant double strike spell. I think that's going to go a long way in um, aggro decks for a variety of reasons. And also this will kind of blow out some decks like Boros Convoke. It could also, I guess, be used in decks like Boros Convoke, uh, especially with the bunny corn. So, uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> but uh but but the play is you know usually you have to choose between attacking through and staying on blocks for boros convoke so boros convoke will lose when they attack and they think they have lethal and you have a trick right yeah so untapping all your stuff so they don't have lethal they they'll they might leave nothing because they're greedy and uh, then we can blast through and we can blow them out on blocks um and the double strike is just crazy right especially when you're doing flyers um I mean, th this is going to be sick because it, I think it's the most useful alternative to double strike on a card that will blow people out. And you can do both. So I'm super pumped about it. I think it's going to have way more effect on the game than people are giving credit for. And I'm always on the boat with you. Like, if you're going to ever do some type of budget thing, if you find some double strike in it, that's really the key, right? You're not building a budget deck that's sitting there lasting 20 minutes, right? You're trying to get in and get them out of there. And so all those double exactly. tri striking tricks are just so crucial. And I think that's what makes you so good at building those. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. No, well, I cannot wait. And again, I always check out your videos. I can't wait to see the new brews you have cooking up for the new one. So thank you so much for sharing with all my viewers about your decks. And make sure you check out Mythic Mike. Link in the description for his channel as well. If you are looking for creative, unique, literally seeing nowhere else on the internet type of decks, he is definitely the channel you want to go see. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Awesome, man. Let's go, baby. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with Mana Man, and we are ready to hear his top cards he's excited for when Outlaws of Thunder Junction hit tomorrow. Remember, the whole idea of this is you can go check out his channel. What's he psyched for? Maybe you're psyched for it as well. These are his must crafts, though, the things he's excited to brew around. So I cannot wait to hear it. So go ahead. Hit us with your first one. Nice. Hey, it was good to be here. Like I said, we're all super excited for Thunder 
Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I gotta start, I'm gonna do like, the first one is the Colossal Rattleworm. This thing is absolutely crazy. I, like, I had to reread it. When this first came out, and I saw this on Twitter as a spoiler, I honestly thought it was like a fan-made <laughs> card, because it just seems ridiculous. Having that flash, as long as you control a desert, and as we discussed, there are deserts that don't even have to come in tapped. And, obviously, just being a 6-5 for 4 seems pretty absurd to me. And then, obviously, later on, you get to ramp with it if it's in your graveyard for a desert. But that's a small price to pay. So, I overall, I think the Colossal Rattleworm may a few ways into my bruise. And, you know, I, I don't know. Will it be... Can it bring Mono Green back from the dead and standard? I hope so, but... You know, we'll see. Time so will are you looking at the low curve and this being a top end, or are you looking at this as going to be your ramp big green? I'm looking at this to be big green. Um, I think that, well, obviously with the deserts can kind of maybe throw your mana base off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think that especially with its second ability to really capture the full upside of the card, you may want to go for, you know, you know, um, maybe something like, you know, Nissa is obviously a pretty good finisher. Now, this is going to need a little bit of help too. So, like I said, Mono Green has been a little bit, I mean, it's been very slept on, if we're being completely honest. So, it's a forgotten I child. This, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, I'm hoping this can kind of, amongst other cards, but yeah, the Colossal Rattleworm definitely um, catches my attention, to say the least. I agree. It's a big one for Mono Green that I'm excited to build around too. Who doesn't like a big giant worm, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. So, what else do you have on your list that you're hyped to brew around? Definitely. This one is going to be, um, I call it low-hanging fruit, just because like I think everyone kind of knows about it, but the slick shot show-off, and as you know, I'm a pretty big fan of, of alliteration, but uh, <laughs> this thing is absolutely crazy. I think um, having that Super Saiyan prowess, that plus two, plus zero uh, for every non-creature spell, along with haste, would be good. But as we discussed, man, it's just like the plot on top of it, being able to like just zoom that thing in. I, I mean... You know, you're going to have this thing in a monstrous rage, and for, I want to say, you know, turn, whatever, it's going to be just, like, for one mana, you get a monstrous rage on this thing, because it'll, it'll come in free. Yeah. A monstrous rage, the, the, the shenanigans are going to get nasty. I mean, I, I think you could, it's not going to be uncommon to see this thing with, like, 10, 10 or more power. I mean, it's going to get absolutely nasty. Like, yeah, uh, like all those turn cover. three kill decks just got better. Picnic Ruiner, I mean, and I put it, so I made a top 10 list and I did put it as my number one card because I mostly play best of one, but mm -hmm. I think if you're a best of three player, you're not going to worry about it as much. But in best of one, there's just so many great decks this thing's going to go into. And even just your basic mono red. I mean, the thing is absolutely ridiculous. So I'm glad to hear others are super hyped for that card as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think it's going to be a pain in the butt, to be completely yeah. honest with you. It, it's going to be, if you don't like Mono Red, <laughs> mm, sorry. It's, it's, or maybe, I mean, there could be even other brews too, but I think, I mean, at least in Mono Red, it's going to be a thing. So get, get ready. It's one of those things where I'm thinking about, like, I'm hyped to build around it. And then after about a week, I'm like, okay, I'm tired of losing to this card. <laughs> I think I think that one's gonna get old pretty fast. I think, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So, what else we got? We got we got some mono green action going. We got some mono red with some gruel, maybe, or lots of just. I mean, that could go in. Is it too? So, what else are we building around? Definitely. Yeah, I would say the next thing. It, oh my gosh, it's going to be Jace reawakened. I mean. If you're not plotting what you can do with plot of the brand new mechanic, I always want to see, like, you know, what, what's with the, the new mechanic? How can we break it? And with Jace, yeah, it's a, it's really, I think just for uniqueness, it's very it's very unique because oh, yeah. for two blue, it's, it's a two drop, but you can't play it until turn four, which is interesting. But being able to plot a card, and this is not a minus, this is a plus, being able to plot something... You know, it seems like okay, but as we know, Bramble from Brambrel familiar? The Bramble? raccoon. You know? Yeah, the raccoon. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> being able to cast that, I mean, being able to um, just drop that for the other side yeah. for free. Um, am I missing something here? That seems absolutely, that, that's of course the, the best thing that I can think of that we're going to be able to do with this thing. And so maybe some sort of like Simic, maybe even Bant control, because I mean, it is going to be slower. So maybe I will see. But. I mean, the again, that's just the first thing that we're plotting up with plot, but that has to be up there. 
Yeah, the other nice thing, a lot of people don't like, obviously you can't play till turn four, but what kept running through my head was, wait, it costs two mana on turn four. If I have four mana, maybe I have a no more lies I hold up now. Maybe it's mm -hmm. a go for throughout I hold up now to give it protection. So not necessarily that it's a negative that I'm playing on turn four, but now I have some protection for this thing as well. And I think there's already that Demir, the, uh, you know, the enchantment, the memory one where you want to draw cards anyway. So like, all sorts of synergies and things that could go into. I know I have a lot of things I want to test it out with. So it's definitely a card, though, that people are a little tore on. Some people are saying it's bad. Some are saying it's good. I just can't imagine a two-mana Planeswalker just not doing some work in Standard. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Like I said, it, I think, um, I mean, Jace, Jace is always pretty good. They do, they do, they do them on right. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then what is our last kind of play around kind of deck idea theme we're looking at for this next set that all the viewers out there should probably go craft these cards day one? Yeah, it's going to be uh, Giza the Hellraiser. Now, I mean, skeletons and zombies, not only are they fun, but they're also really good. I think you can you can definitely make a... Um, they're both underrated in the meta but you definitely can build them and obviously for standard before we get the rotation you're going to be able to put all of those like you know uh champion of the parish i believe and all the like overcharged amalgam those that i kind of really want to revisit the zombies especially yeah. with this because um it is nice that because that, that, most people are thinking skeletons and that you can for sure but she actually generates zombies so i think the zombies may be where i'm leaning towards but either way, and then you get the, the Ward 2 and 2 Life all on top of it. So a little bit of built-in protection. Just seems like a really solid card. Yeah, so that was one I think when it was first spoiled I made my top 10, I slept on. I, I left it off, and after now it's been a week looking at the cards, that definitely would go in my top 10. It's so many different ways you could play it and commit a crime the turn you play it. So even if they kill it, granted, they're going to have to pay the war two plus lose two life. But now you're at least getting those two, two zombies. And if she lives, forget about it. We have 10 power. We just put on the board. So yeah, definitely one I slept on. And I really think this set is bringing a lot of mid range power to the game. I don't think besides our slick shot aggro got a whole lot, but boy, is there some good mid range for Grixis, Demir, Rakdos, so yeah absolutely and like i said i mean uh being able to like to commit those crimes and stuff like that i think um and with black i mean you also i i personally i still am a fan of duress i still i still give love to liliana so you get some discard action to maybe prevent those sunfalls from getting rid of all your precious zombies so i don't know i i feel like it's viable maybe not a meta breaker but viable at least yeah i, I can't wait to play with that one i have so many decks i want to put it in so where can everybody go check out all these awesome brews that you're going to be doing starting tomorrow they're gonna be able to get them right on my channel like i said i got uh i'll be cranking out some shorts and you know just the the deck brews as you know business as usual um said i'll be check out check everyone out like i said uh ace me everyone like i said we um we're gonna we're gonna try to put our show for you guys yeah, so thank you so much for doing this and his link in the description for his channel, but go check it out. All sorts of great content creators this week are going to be producing some awesome stuff. And so I wanted to showcase a few of them today. So thank you so much for joining me today, man and man. And I can't wait to see tomorrow's video from you. The pleasure's all mine. Likewise. All right. See you later. <laughs> All right, so I am here with Hands of Justice, and we're all ready to hear what cards he's super hyped to pump for in this new set. Now, if you haven't been watching his channel, first of all, go subscribe, go check it out. But he's doing a little push to go Mythic number one. And if you've watched his channel, you also know he is an expert at aggro and an expert at mono white. So he's currently trying to bring mono white back to its glory days, and that's what he's been playing with consistently for that number one push. So we want to hear from you with these new cards. What are you looking to adapt? that mono white deck that you're currently working with thanks so much ace i really appreciate being here on your channel and, I, and you're just an amazing content creator so i'm thanks. so happy to be here to do a collab here with you um but yeah i'm really excited about the new set i had a chance to look at some of the cards and i've been looking at specifically how it's going to help mono white aggro mono white humans and there were a couple cards that really stood out to me as being really really powerful uh number one we have avon interrupter which is two white and a colorless, which is a 2-2 two -two flyer with flash. And when it comes into, uh, when it hits the battlefield, you exile target spell. So basically it becomes plotted, which is part of the new mechanic. Um, and that allows your 
you know the player to cast it on a on a, like a a turn after that for no mana. But you essentially you plot the spell and you exile it, and then spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast. So this is a really really powerful effect for a highly aggressive deck where you're just trying to bash face and being able to just like stop that. Uh, board wipe, stop that removal spell is going to just be unbelievably powerful. So really excited about that. Yeah, I know that so be... many times where I'm sitting there, I'm like, I just need one more turn. Just no yeah. sweeper this turn. <laughs> if I could only counter the sweeper this turn, and then Sunfall yeah. hits, and now you have a little way where you get that extra turn and then finish it off. So yeah. Well, and I love the fact that you know you could use it to tar you know target more than just board wipes. It's not just exactly. board wipe protection, but it's like if they have the go for the throat, you're like, nope. Swing in for the win, get there. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, also, so many the ways just to interrupt their play, right? They drop a four mana creature. Fine, great. Now right. next turn they've spent two mana on that creature. Plus, uh, yeah. maybe they can't do anything else. So now you just delayed them that time too, and now your board is already too big. So yeah, I definitely think that one's going to be a player. And I think even huge in best of three. I think they'll see oh, yeah. some plays in best of one, but I really see best of three on that one, like big well, time. It also has just like the sleeper text there that it makes casting stuff from your graveyard more expensive. Yeah. That's going to just pose a bunch of the decks that are really big right now in the meta. You know, you see all those decks that are running World Souls Rage trying to like make use of the graveyard. Um, it's going to be great graveyard hate. So yeah, no, very, that very excited. For that. Awesome first one. So what else we got for the <laughs> mono white aggro? Um, the other, the next card that I wanted to talk about was Bovine Intervention. This is a instant. Um, I believe it's an instant. I guess double check me on that. But it's one white and one colorless. And you destroy target artifact or creature. And then the controller creates a 2 2 white ox creature token. Yeah, instant. So, yeah, kind of the nice thing here is that yes, it's removal. But you can also think of it as a way to essentially protect your own creature. So, you know, if your opponent uses removal on one of your creatures, you can also use that to give yourself a creature in like a, you know a corner situation where you want to ensure that you have enough creatures on board to you know swing for the win so it, it's it can be used both offensively and defensively um potentially you can set up like weird combat where you could like you know destroy one of your own creatures create an ox token block one of their guys get a good trade um no that's not going to be like the main way that you use it but i just like cards like this that have versatility always interest me. Yeah, I love hearing your your slant on this because from everybody else, all I've heard is throwing that in to some type of control shell. Because like, who cares? They yeah. get a 2-2. Two -two, we slow them down for a turn. We'll take care for of sure. that token with a temporary lockdown or a wrath. And so I just love how your brain goes. Again, you read the card <laughs> with that aggro mind. And that's what's been so cool from hearing all of you and your takes on these cards. Yeah, and I think part of it too is like when you have removal in a aggro deck, you're always thinking like, when is this going to be a dead card, right? Yeah, and yeah. so being able to have a card that has some utility outside of just what it's you know used for uh, mainly is going to be useful. And while this kind of effect is going to be much better in control, I think there is still some utility for it in aggro. No, I, I love that. All right, so... We got ourselves a, a good tempo creature to slow down our opponent. We got a good removal. What else we got? So Requisition Raid is going to be the next card I wanted to oh, talk about. This is a one white. And um, again, double check on this. I'm not sure if it's a sorcery or if it's an instant. Um, but I believe that, yeah, it, it gives you the ability. So for just for one white, you can then choose to add one colorless mana to destroy target artifact. Or you can use it to destroy target enchantment by adding one colorless. Or you can use it to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that target player controls for one extra colorless. So you kind of get to, you know, like build what you need to do, whether you need to get rid of a pesky artifact or enchantment, buff your team. And just having that flexibility again, I think is going to allow you to run like maybe one or two copies in the main deck. And it's going to be really, really powerful. And, um, yeah, I, I guess, do you know, just remind me, do you know if that's yeah, an instant yeah, or a sorcery? Yeah, so that, that, one, that one's a sorcery, but that was okay. actually one of the cards I had on my list. I kind of like to try and make guesses for all of you guys, which ones you might. Yeah. And that was one for <laughs> you, for sure. It meets all your criteria, right? You like to go wide, right? You could pump up the squad. You like for any sure. card that gives you that versatility. There's temporary Absolutely. lockdown where, of course, a, a mono white deck wants to be able to take care of that. So you can take care of that. Artifacts yeah. are going to be coming up kind of big in this next set as well. So just... 
a total toolbox card that you could put in there just screams you. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, so I think that's going to be great in this new yeah. set. No, I um, agree with that one. I, I think that one could go in lots of different decks. Obviously, a sideboard all star, but for us best of one players, it definitely yeah. has that uh, the best of one potential of going in those as well. So for sure, uh, the next one on my list here, I was looking at trained Aranx. So this is one white and one colorless. It's a three one creature that is a mount. So it's one of the new mechanics. Um, you can saddle it for two. And so basically what that means is by tapping a creature or a combination of creatures with power of two or less, or, or excuse me, uh, two or greater, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, two or greater, you can then saddle it. And what that means is when it attacks while it's saddled, it gets first strike until end of turn and you scry one. So this is really powerful and an aggressive deck because, you know, if you're just going through your curve, you play this on turn two, turn three, you play another creature that's summoning sick anyways, and then you just use that to give it the saddle effect, attack with first strike, and you can really, you know, create a very powerful creature here. It kind of reminds me of, like, um, the Hollow Blade creature, like oh, the 3-1 yeah, yeah. that could, like, tap and become indestructible. It's not quite as good as that, but it's it, it's kind of like... Sort of mimicking that a little bit because first strike is super powerful especially early game yeah so just a little personal note so i did the pre-release event in paper everybody and i yeah. had one of those and it won me two games just on its own right i dropping yeah. it on turn two it took them so long until they had anything that had a uh, toughness four or greater and they didn't want to just chump block lose their creature so i just kept right. swinging in and before they knew it they were below 10 life and now they're just like on the defense the whole time a couple of flyers got over and so it's just one of those cards just like you were saying in the past we've had those three ones that they just don't want to block and they just yeah. can't take that much early damage so yeah definitely a nice one and good for all those budget players and budget decks as well so for sure and also it's just like the mark of a great aggro card oh, yeah anytime that you see like power greater than the cost to actually play it um it's going to be what you're looking for yeah absolutely um, limited all-star too so <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> Um, the next one isn't technically a white card, but I think it absolutely deserves to be in the mono white aggro deck is Lava Spur Boots. This is an equipment yeah. which costs one colorless and then you has an equip cost of one as well. So for just by paying one colorless, you can equip a creature to give it plus one plus zero and haste and ward one. So <laughs> this is amazing rate, right? Um, this is also a way to kind of sneak in the haste ability into a white deck, which we have never seen before. So outside of equipment that gives you this ability, I think there was an equipment like many, many years ago that um, I think it cost like two mana could give haste. I can't remember if it was equipped for one or equipped for two, but it, it was significantly worse than Lava Spur Boots. Yeah. Well, the, the one mana is just absolutely huge. The extra ward one you love. Yeah. But I mean, I'm just totally thinking, how many times do we drop an Adeline when you have a fourth mana, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean... 100%. Yeah. This is going to be amazing in, in mono white, I think. Yeah, so that definitely interesting. And when when was the last time we had a good equipment for mono white? For me, it was uh, what was that? Yeah. Skyclave, the three mana two two first yeah, yeah. Gave it flying. Can't remember the whole name, but I mean, I that love was a that long, card. Yeah, that, that was a long time ago. That's last time was, I played one. Yeah, it was <laughs> quite white. a while ago. Yeah, <laughs> quite a while. But well, yeah, this I could I could definitely see this as like a two of in a deck something like oh, yeah, that. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you got your mindset on the mono white as you're doing this awesome <laughs> little run that you're doing. But once yeah. you jump out of that mono white and you start brewing around other things, what's getting you really hyped? What do you think one of your first things you're going to kind of try and build around? Oh, for sure. There's one card that kind of screamed out to me that just looked so much fun. And this is Ty Joaquin Perfect Shot. It's one red and one white. It's a 2-3. And what it does is whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to a creature equal to that creature's toughness, you draw a card. And then it also has the ability to pay X mana and tap. And then if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much damage plus X instead. So this I think is gonna be an amazing combo with End the Festivities. And I think it's called a Tectonic, oh God, I can't remember the name of it, but it basically does the same thing as End the Festivities. So one mana in red to yeah. deal one damage to every creature that the opponent controls. And so if you can use this with that, you can essentially machine gun their entire team and then draw like five <laughs> or six cards. Yeah. And like using this against Boros, like I can't imagine you ever lose after you do this once. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that sounds incredibly cool. I, that's one yeah. I haven't even thought about either. And oh yeah, that that also makes an awesome video too. Everybody loves those machine gun effects, sure. and you're just <laughs> oh no, that's a super cool one. That that definitely people are going to want to stay tuned and checking that out. So where can people see you? Is it YouTube? We got Twitch. Where are we going to find you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I got my channel there on YouTube. Um, we'll have like maybe a link in the description. But yeah, 100%. if you just look up hand underscore of underscore justice, uh, you'll find me right there on YouTube. But yeah, super excited for the new stuff. And just to let you and all know, his content, right? A lot of YouTube creators, they'll do a different deck every time. You'll see him really start with something, see the many evolutions of it, really become a master of that deck and kind of show you how the meta shifts, how he shifts with it and changes. So it's really unique, really cool. And as far as top players, you'll see a lot of people get mythic. You don't see a lot of people as high as Hand of Justice is all the time. Just absolute guaranteed one of the best players you're gonna see watch. Very few mistakes, just really solid play. Always thinking through things. One of my absolute favorites, to watch so i hope you enjoy them as well one last thing i'll say is i'm really excited i think uh, we're going to look at doing a collaborative draft here yeah. in the coming week and uh doing uh yeah our first draft of the new set so super excited for that yeah so this video it's dropping on monday tuesday tomorrow we're all going to get all the cards and then on Probably Wednesday, we're gonna do our first draft. We'll have no experience at the format at all. We're gonna just hop in and that'll be the Saturday video and we'll see what happens. So wish us luck on that one. Yeah, super excited. And thanks again, Ace, for letting yeah. me come into your channel here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. All right, and so we are here with Max Damage, one of the co-founders of MTG Rebellion, which gives us some of the absolute best, best of three content. And if you're looking for anything competitive out there in paper, what's happening on the tournament scene, you have to be checking him out. Has the absolute best meta breakdown in the game. So I cannot wait to hear from him what he's got to say about the new cards from Thunder Junction, what he thinks is going to shake up the meta, and which ones he's hyped to build around. So floor is all yours. Let's hear it. Thank you for being, thank you for uh, having me here. Really appreciate you. Uh, one of the first cards right away that, that just hits when I, when I saw it, when I read it, uh, lately I've been on these uh, Profs Eidetic Memory decks. Yeah. Uh, there's an Azorius one, there's a Demir one, and then there's even an Esper one now. Um, so whatever flavor you like, I think Duelist of the Mind is a card that slots into those for sure. It is a two cost human advisor, uh, star three is the uh, is the levels there. Flying vigilance, and it has power equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Uh, and then whenever you commit a crime, you also draw a card, discard a card, uh, triggers once per turn. I think with it w within that deck, I think there's a huge opportunity for this card to go big. It has evasion, it has vigilance. Um, so I, I definitely see this as one of the powerhouses of that deck. Definitely a four of in those prof decks. Um, another card that comes to mind, now this one I think slots into sideboards everywhere that can have it, is uh, Pest Control. Oh my gosh, yeah. we've been talking heavily <laughs> in the Rebellion about Pest Control and whether the con the Convoke decks, the Toxic decks, Mono Red, how they're going to kind of like maneuver around this card because I feel like it's, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be very prevalent. Yeah, I'm super um, curious in best of three how people are going to – obviously that card's going in sideboards all over. And how are those Boros Convoke and how are those Toxic decks going to adapt to that? I mean that's going to be a thing. Yeah, that's a huge question week one. I think uh, my answer is I think they will go up the curve just a little mm. at first. Um, I think Mono Red is probably going to do the best at yeah. evading this card. There's there's a lot of good two drops in that deck. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see if Convoke changes at all. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Convoke player, so I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Convoke got your fast land, but then it's got a lot of hate coming. <laughs> yeah, it does. So we'll we'll see how that interaction plays out. And then sort of the uh, the last card I wanted to talk about. Uh, this one, I think, is is a sleeper. Avon Interrupter. Now, another big question we asked on the State of the Meta uh, week one when Thunder Junction comes out, is plot going to be huge? Is it yeah. going to be sprinkled th throughout decks, or is there going to just be plot-specific decks? Um, I think Azorius uses plot. I think uh, Mono Green is going to use plot, if it's a deck at all. Um, in any event, Avon Interrupter, the ability is Flash, which is great. Um, and it's an evasive 2-2 body, but it uh, spells your opponent cast from graveyards or from exile costs two more. Um, 
So we'll see. We'll see if somebody I, – I, I made the challenge to brewers out there. We'll see if somebody slots in four of these in the main <laughs> and plays with it week one just to disrupt – all the plot mechanics that are going to be going on. Are you going to see so, this more as a main deck for best of three? I mean, definitely sideboard all-star, but what sort yeah. of decks do you see it going into the main deck? Yeah. So um, I think when you're playing like a, uh, like Azorius Proft is one that I'm going to play. Yeah. In. Okay. Um, just to kind of have it as a, as a utility card. Uh, it's an evasive two, two body. So I feel like that's, that's already pretty cool. Um, but then it also kind of, uh, disrupts like it comes in as a disruption spell uh to an opponent's spell in addition to having that passive ability so um maybe maybe that deck needs a way to get around you know board wipes to get around uh specific hate targeted removal and that could be a card that could be used in that slot yeah very cool love love to hear the different things going on in the best of three as always so always checking out your channel but what can we all look forward to in this coming week with the new cards coming out what sort of stuff do you have for us all right, so we're actually taking a week off of Stay the Meta to let the meta develop, of course, um, and, and to talk about the new meta after week one. So we're actually going to be doing the Rebel Cast. Uh, we're going to have a couple of them. You were featured on one of them, so y'all can check that out. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Going to be on there. And uh, me and Athena the Bun are just going to be talking about Outlaws of Thunder Junction brews, what we're brewing, what we're, uh, what we're cooking up. And uh, yeah, if uh, you know if anybody out there wants to brew with us, feel free to go and check out the Rebellion Discord as well. Yeah, Discord is an awesome place. They talk about decks all the time, hot new cards, deck ideas. Just a really good place with a lot of competitive players out there. So can't recommend it enough. And thank you so much for joining us on this. Hoping to get everybody hyped for this new set. And we want to know oh, yeah. what cards are going to be absolute bangers. So that your advice there definitely going to help us all. Thank you for having me. Welcome back, and I'm so happy to hear from all those awesome content creators, all sorts of different fun styles from real brewers to best of three to ones that will sit there and really grind out a deck and really find out all its intricacies. So I love to hear all the different ideas. I think all of you can see this set is powerful. Just so many great cards out there. So I do want to talk about a couple cards. I made my top 10 literally the day the set was fully released and I seen all the cards. Now that I've had at least a week now where I'm sitting, looking, brewing, and having uh, just some better ideas with some of these cards, I want to make a couple modifications or things I left out. So I want to first start with Duelist of the Mind. I think, yeah, best of three, it's going to be good. We talked about it a little bit there with max damage. This card definitely can be a thing that pops off because crime is just so easy to commit and the Duelist of the Mind slots right into those Demir decks. And so you're going to get those extra card draws there. But we also have so many different spells that you're drawing three, five, or even more. We also got the Step Between worlds which potentially we're going to draw seven cards off of that yeah your opponent will get to draw as well but maybe we just kill them right then and there so there's so many cool things you could do with it and you can't underestimate the vigilance granted it's not the greatest blocker in the world so i do agree with max that it's going to slot a little bit more into those best of three decks because best of one sometimes you're going to see just a little bit more aggro and maybe they get under you and not being able to trade with one of their creatures could be a problem unless we're kind of on the play and really putting the pressure on them but i definitely think Think Duelist of the Mind is going to be a card that should have been in my top 10. The next one I left off is Karvik the Punisher. And I just wasn't so sure if I was going to be able to get everything together properly, but a Grixis, a Rakdos, crime style deck, this thing slots right in. It also fits into lots of different combo decks, right? Bloodletter is a card that will combo off all the time. We already have that combo with it that we could kill our opponent with. It curves right out. And the problem is if they kill it right away, though, how do we get it back? So this is another nice way to potentially get it back, right? Commit a crime, very simple. And then all we have to do is pay that two life and yes we have to pay the mana cost of the blood letter but still it's a nice free kind of way not free but another way in our deck just to be able to get that thing back so i definitely think it's more high end of my top 10 but i think you're going to see this quite a bit as well the fact that it's a warlock the fact that this thing is legendary is going to have certain synergies as well and finally, the one that probably should have been my top three is going to be Gisa the Hellraiser. This card is an absolute monster. I guess what I was kind of leaning out on it, I, I, I underwhelmed a little bit with just being a 4-4 four, four for 5, but the thing is, you can't look at it like that. You assume it's going to die, but a lot of times once it hits the battlefield, you're going to be able to commit that crime immediately. And now you're putting a total of 10 power on the battlefield. They kill this, we still have 4 power on the battlefield, 
Plus the ward, the ward two is nice as long as them losing a little bit of life. So it just has so many little factors that could go in lots of decks. I just think this is a good top end card for a lot of things. And I do feel like Outlaws of Thunder Junction gave us a little bit more of that mid range push, right? Aggro has a couple cards, but I don't think aggro was pushed as much. I don't think control was pushed as much, but mid range, whether we're talking about Grixis, Rakdos, Gugari, so many different versions, Jung, I think all those things are going to get a little bit of a, a push. And now I think mid range, we're going to see a lot more in our meta. And this card is going to slot into so many of those decks. So this one, I actually think would have kind of gone into my top three and a must craft and one, you know, I'm going to be playing week one. So I'd love to hear from all of you in the comments. What what did you think about each one of those streamers and their recommendations and their thoughts? What cool new brews are you looking for? What cards are your top ones as well? And I will see you all on the ladder tomorrow. And until then, never forget, you're an ace.